Let's do it live. Let's do it live. We're live. I think we are. Can y'all hear me? Give me a thumbs up. I got my lavalier mic right there. Yeah, but, uh, give me a thumbs up. It's nice down here, Brian. Where are you at, Brian? Where, where are you? Because it's nice. Are you in, you're in PA, aren't you? It's nice down here in Georgia. It's catching some sun on my pasty white skin. Hello, Denise. Hello, Denise. Pulverizer. Pulverizer doesn't want to join Amar. Okay. Pulverizer said, here's the cool kids. But he didn't want to go and uh, join Amar's channel. All right. So, all right. Pulverizer, just give me a thumbs up. You can hear me. Pittsburgh. Yeah, right on. Yeah, well, that's what, you know. And, and you don't have cops in Pittsburgh either after what? I heard in Pittsburgh from like nine till uh, like what midnight till like six in the morning. You can't call the cops. I mean, it's crazy. But everybody can hear me, right? Pulverizer gave me a thumbs up, but I don't really trust Pulverizer. So I need a thumbs up from someone else. But uh, I heard in Pittsburgh. All right, right on. Good. Yeah, I heard it snowing up there in Maine. Yes, sir. Yeah, I saw that. I hit the like button because I'm a cool kid. Yeah, make sure you hit the like button. I got to be, I got to be better at that. Hit the like button. That's. In the city only, yeah, yeah. I, friggin' Pittsburgh. I mean, what? It's just dude, come on. I mean, this whole. I didn't want to get into it. The idea, Philly suburbs, right on. There's Kathy Sheeran. All right, Kathy, K. Paso, Bruce, D.B. Douglas. Um, the idea, Judy Bay, Homer. I saw some uh, Boss Tweed. I. Uh, yeah, y'all heard that, right? With Pittsburgh, they're saying don't call the cops like after midnight and before 6 p.m. It's freaking insane. It's like, it's like it just invite the criminals to it's it's insane. I uh I just can't believe why would anyone open a store in Pittsburgh? Yeah, I mean, literally, why would anyone live in Pittsburgh? You're like, I can't call the cops. And these same people say don't call the cops. Remember, they're also the same one who said you shouldn't have a firearm. Because the police will be there to protect you. I mean, it's, it's, I just, I can't believe people buy this stuff. It's insane to me, frankly. I just don't have a gun. The police will be there to protect you. Except we're going to defund the police and we can't call between midnight and six when most crimes happen. And we're going to let out criminals all the time from jails. But don't buy a gun. That's going to show you're a gun nut. Yeah, it's crazy to me. All right. So what I want to do today, I want to get, we're going to do my, was over there all right so we'll just let a couple more people that's the dent uh uh i'm generally i generally live rural so immediately expecting law enforcement has never been my expectation the police only work business hours out exactly the police are working uh, bankers hours 100 is relatively conservative there in pittsburgh at least it was well apparently not anymore it's nuts um i was hoping the live stream was around the pit no because we got to get on in my board here yeah, Ted, it's crazy, man. It's uh, it's it's gone insane, and uh, I mean, you just got to get out of these blue places because they are they're freaking nuts, dude. It's crazy. Don't buy a gun. Primers and powder are finally coming back in stock. Yeah, man. Yeah, there you go. So we got the uh, uh, flash in the pan. You know what I'm saying? The police work business. That's that's. I mean, just I I like who votes for that? I, and uh, the sad thing is, do we really vote for it? Um, Covington, Ohio here. Yeah, Bernie Sanders is an idiot too. Um, and we all know that. But my man, uh, uh, Andrew Biggs from American Enterprise in, uh, Institute uh, had posted a blistering takedown of Bernie Sanders. Um, yeah, that's right. Just posted no guns here. This is a gun-free zone. You don't need guns. I mean, they're they're bad and they're racist. Um, no one voted. Yeah, they never, that's the thing too. No one ever runs on the idea they never run on this stuff. They never run on letting all these legal immigrants in, you know, getting rid of the cops. They never run on that. Uh, 15 inches of snow predicted for central Minnesota. Yeah, that's why we, uh, yeah, defund the police worked. It did. I, I just, it's, it's crazy. But the problem is, and that's why I got to get out of Fulton County at some point, because Fulton County is run by Maroons. You know, I'm mean, just idiots across the board. You know, that's Fannie Willis. And Fannie Willis is what I told Jill was a good person. She was running against this crazy guy named Paul Howard. And let's just put it this way. If you defended your property here in North Fulton County, North Fulton County, and you happen to be the same look as me, if you know what I'm saying, and you defended your property, there's no votes for Paul Howard uh, to get from protecting my rights to defend my property, if you, know I'm, if you know what I'm saying. And so Fannie Willis came along and said she's going to be a little bit more of a, she didn't say a moderate necessarily, but just 
less political because that was the same time that idiot in St. Louis County, whatever it was, went after those two people who brandished firearms when BLM was walking through. Um, and so it's, it's obvious that your only hope was to get rid of Paul Howard. And Fannie Willis was, you know, the best, <laughs> you know, she, she was the, 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 the tallest person standing in a, in a little person contest, if that makes sense. So I voted for her because I had to, we had to get rid of freaking, uh, what's his name? Paul Howard. Um, and actually she went after some of the, the corruption, the teachers and stuff too. That, see, it's just, these guys get bought, man. It's not just the Democrats. You hear about this Republican up in Wisconsin who just magically made his last day, August, or uh, uh, April 19th, which is like the last day. You're like, you can't have a special election after a, uh, uh, April 19th, which means the Republicans have now a one-seat majority. So Ken Buck leaves. This guy in Wisconsin leaves. The Republicans got rid of George Santos. Someone else left. You know, we only had a six-seat majority to begin with. You see what I'm saying? It's like these people are all, all, I mean, and, you know, thankfully the MAGA train is taking over little by little by little in the Republican Party. You know, like we got Ronald McDonald's gone. Now she's with MSNBC. Vermont's in the house. Um, does anyone realize that their portfolio is one skin up positive return from January 1st, 2022 as of last Wednesday? Um, Philly Fox in the house. Vermont. Rob, Ohio. But anyway, it's just, it's crazy to me. And so the squatters, and then the squatters, that's 100%, the squatters. It's insane. Uh, squatters are coming from my folk now uh, because we live here. And I, I told Charlotte, I said, man, thank God we got dogs, dude. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying, let's just say you go on vacation and you're in, in uh, Boston, Massachusetts. And you just go on vacation. You come back from vacation, these people are in your house. You're like, uh, well, we're squatters. You're like, you're not. This is my house. You're illegal. And they say, no, my wife, this is what health 25 years ago. She used to work for a real estate attorney. This is 25 years ago in Boston. And then she said trying to get squatters out was like a six month process where you had to pay for all the bills. This is 25 years ago. They're all owned. Yeah. 100% man. They'll need to have a D run house to reign in Trump again. I, I think that's what it is. 100%. I think they're uh I think and they're letting illegals have guns. It's it's insane. Like I don't understand why are homeless people and illegals have more rights than American citizens? No one voted for this. No one ever said that. You know what I'm saying? And and just here it is. It's, it just shows you the politicians aren't in charge. Um, but they need it. I think that's what's going to happen. They want the Democrats in charge. There are, there's enough Republican Party members who say we got to get the Democrats in charge of the House so they can take away any. Uh, you know they can just go after Trump. You know, blah blah blah. And they might not even certify his election. Mike Gallagher, that's that clown's name. Yeah, Fulton must be rough with Powell getting all that weed somewhere. He just goes down South Fulton County and gets it. Um, at least PA has Castle Doctrine. I'm sure we do here in Georgia too. But again, what if you're a D but remember if you're in a county that your district attorney says we're prosecuting you? I mean, how are you gonna pay for that? You know what I'm saying? Um, by the way, I'm in Queens, New York, right by the squatters. That's crazy. Did you hear there's squatters next to LeBron James's house too? Yeah, but I mean, see, at the end of the day, see, this is why I know Trump is legit because he's losing so much money. And I don't know that true social thing. I mean, I guess he made some money from that, but no one else is legit. Roanoke, Virginia, Steve Stone. No one else is legit, man. I mean, but, you know, maybe Kerry Lagos. I don't know. But in terms of the presidential thing, no one else loses money. Everyone else makes money. But uh, but Trump lost all that money, and he's just being tight. You know, his hands are being tight. But the issue is what they're doing, what the unit state is doing, the, the, the unit party, is they're saying we're going to tie Trump's hands by making sure the House of Representatives is back in the Democratic hands. And now they're going to allow the illegals that come in your various uh, states and whatnot to give you more voting rights. So now if, a, if let's just say New York State has an extra $100,000, 100,000 illegals, that's 100,000 people that need representation for congressional ma maps and whatnot. But at the end, hey, Bill C. from Noonan, I haven't seen you around for a while. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, it's, the, the, I mean, it's just, it's, it's just, it's the same. I don't think the, the Democrats are going to retake over the House in a fair and free election in 2024. I don't. Um, and I think the Senate, yeah, it could be, I think the Senate will go Republicans by two seats. I think the Dems, yeah, I don't think the Democrats are going to take, I think the Republicans will have um, a sizable majority in the House come 2024. Um, at the end of this election, but I, you know, we'll see, we'll see. I, you know, I'm not quite convinced. Uh, 
so this is a Jack Ryan movies. I don't even know what that means. I'm not quite convinced that um, that like the black vote are going to go in mass to Trump. Like you know, I, I follow some of these guys on now Twitter. I'm on Twitter, and you know, some of these guys and you know, Candace Owens and you know, Jason Whitlock and stuff. I'm not quite convinced that's going to happen. Can you still retire in Wellington? I don't know, dude. I don't know. I don't know because I don't know anything about you. Uh, did Missouri have Castle Doctor too? Yeah, right on. That's exactly right. That's what I'm saying. Just because you have Castle Castle Doctor doesn't mean your DA is going to come after you. McCloskey, that's right, man. Yep, 100. So anyway, whatever. It's just at this stage, it's kind of like, yeah, there's enough Republicans that are righteous to make you still stay in the game. But at the end of the day, the Republican Party is it's just this again. Well, it's Washington generals. Uh, they best certify and take that L. Yeah, why? Uh, I live in Wisconsin. We have Republicans like uh, Mike Gallagher and Paul Ryan, and they're not Republicans, man. It's just they're they're literally bought and sold by the Democrats. For some reason, they're able to convince the Republicans. Is a good live when a whiteboard's involved. Thanks, uh, Denise. It's a, it's a, for some reason the Republican voters they think these guys are legit. That's crazy. And I'm sure I did at one point too. Now, right. so let's go into the. Uh, I want to show you guys. So this is right here. Uh, can you all see that? So this right here is from October 1928 to September 30, 1930. This is the Dow Jones. It's based at 240 in October 28, and it went to 390 roughly a year later, not even a full year later. So he went from 240 to 390. That meant we went up 62% in a year. 62.5%. All right. So people are loving life. Now, there's lots of reasons. By the way, the stock market crash did not create the Great Depression. It's, it's silly, but I'm not going to get that here today. And then it just fell like crazy, but it started creeping back up, and then it fell again until September 30. So basically, another year later, it went from 390 back to 240. So 390 back to 240, and that's a... That's a... Oops, hold on a second. Uh... That's a 38.5% drop. All right, so it went down by 38.5%. All right, so again, it went up from 240 to 390, from 390 back to 240. So this is, so a lot of people say, well, look, the, the gains were significantly higher than the losses. But again, if you do it in reverse, you do it in reverse. To go from 240 back up to 390, if we lost 38% going down, that means we got to go up 62% to go back up, if that makes sense. And if you just look at it from a point-to-point -point perspective, price-to-price, -price, it took until 1954 to get back to even. Now, it kept going down. I mean, it was down 88% when all said and done. But if you just looked at price-to-price, point-to-point, it takes – it took to 1950 – that was not including dividends. That's what I mean. It took to 1954 to get back to even. Anyway, I'd just like to point that out. This is what happened in 1928, 1929, 1930. Now, the real reason for the uh, the calamity was the margin. They actually, it's very interesting. Two things happened at the same time in the Great Depression. They raised the margin requirements. They raised them from like 10 to 20% to 50%. So you could literally buy a, a blue chip railroad company, $100 worth of blue chip railroad company by only putting $10 down. All right, and they raise the. In fact, I think I can even show it to you here. Um, hold on a second, let me get that. Yeah, so I'll show it to you. So here's a Federal Reserve Bolton in uh, February 1929. So they they raise the uh, the margin rates. Oh, the, the margin uh, you, you couldn't you couldn't leverage eight to one, or I guess that'd be five to one. You had to be one to one. That was it. And that was a pretty big deal because so many people were heavily leveraged. They raised the margin requirements. And on top of that, they raised the interest rates as well. Very interesting. So those two things alone really, and there's so much margin debt relative to the stock market capitalization that when they raise these things, it's kind of like what happened in the, we're not laying down this year. I don't know what to talk about, man, but if you're talking about, uh, I, okay, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to entertain any of that stuff on this live stream. Let's just be like that because um, it's silly. 
So let's not let's not be going down that rabbit that rabbit hole. All right, because uh, it won't do anyone any good. Um, anyway, so if we have, I think uh, Ohio Rhinos lost several uh, primary races, and Texas did too. One hundred percent, Andrew uh, Ken Paxson was freaking strong in Texas. All right, so anyway, so they raise the margin requirements, they raise the interest rates, and it's heavily, heavily levered already. And if you don't, if you remember in 2008 and nine, what, well, actually 2007, eight and nine, what happened was, is that mark to market accounting. And so they basically said, you have to basically declare the price of all your assets basically minute by minute, essentially. And what happens, that means the extreme volatility. If your assets went down below the, the market that you had to, let's just say you had to have, I don't know, 20%, uh, you had to have 75% equity for simplicity. Well, within a day, if you drop below 75% equity, whoa, what the going on? If, within a day, if you drop below 75% equity, what happened was I got a strobe light going on over here. Um, there, we, hey, there you go. If you drop below 75% equity, that means you had to liquidate some of your holdings. That's mark to market accounting. We're going to mark your equity, essentially looking at your leverage to your market. If the market is falling like that and the minute it hits like that, you got to start selling stuff. You're like, but I don't want to sell stuff. Just because it's down for temporarily, that should not force me to, to sell. But it did. All right. Yeah. All right. We're gonna have to get we're gonna have to give you a timeout there, Dark Horse, because we don't need any of that on this uh right here. All right, so. Just I don't want anything to do with that, frankly, and it's not something that I'm I want on this channel because this is my livelihood. All right, so you guys can if you want to go down to uh, to uh, if you want to go down that road, don't do it here because right? I don't want anything to do with it. Because um, we saw what happened January sixth, and uh, the same thing's going to happen again. So for people want to go down that road, and because there'll be a lot of suckers who fall for it. Because it's all part of the big strategy. I can't believe people don't see this. It's all part of the big strategy, man. Big strategy is get everybody at odds. You know what I'm saying? Make them fight amongst themselves instead of looking to Ukraine and Israel. We're the control. I don't know why we are so indebted to Ukraine and Israel. I don't know why. Um, it's odd to me. But uh, let's just look over there. Send money over there. In fact, I was just watching today a Muslim thing. There's a, uh, a Muslim uh, guy who's pretty pro-Palestinian on my LinkedIn feed <laughs> was as funny as hell. I couldn't believe it. He's saying, while all these Americans are suffering, you know, for you know, the economy in the, uh, in the world that we, uh, the, the American economy, all these Americans were suffering. America is sending money to Israel. And I said, well, I, I completely agree with that. But his whole point was why we, why is Americans sending money to Israel? When the money could be used to feed Americans and house Americans, all that. I said, dude, one hundred percent. The same can be said about the Ukraine. The same can be said about the Palestinians. Let these two ethnic groups fight it out over there. I don't care. I literally, I don't want people to die. Let them fight. I have one hundred percent siphoning money. Yeah. Marie, how dare you, Marie? I'm gonna put Marie in a timeout. I'm gonna put Marie in a timeout. Time <laughs> but as I'm saying, it's like. Uh, let the two ethnic groups fight it anywhere they want. I don't care. I don't like innocent people dying, but maybe we're a part of the reason they're dying. Ever thought about that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, anyway, so I'm trying to stay focused, Marie. So what happened was, oh, then we had, so we had the, so that's what happened in 2009 is that the massive amounts of market and market accounting led to all these people to have to liquidate, force, force, force. So all these more supplies were coming to the market, supply of shares. They had to sell. They had to sell. They had to sell. There's got to be someone on the buy side. There's has to. If you're trying to sell, you're like, I can't. I, I have to sell. The charter, the regulations that says I have to sell. I have to sell. I have to sell. Well, who's going to buy? Who's on the buy side? Every sell is a buy. There, there, there wasn't a market for the buy side. That's why when zoops, the same thing happened here. There wasn't a, a supply on the buy side. In fact, on top of that, the number three was that we issued more stocks in freaking like September of 2029. There was like, oh, it was like 10% more. I can't what it was. A so the market capitalization was 100 billion, something like that, whatever. They issued like $7 billion worth more of stocks. The, far, the most they've ever done in any month ever, ever. Crazy. So now we have limited people to, on, to buy 
because the buyers have now have, have to deleverage their accounts. They're raising the interest rates too, which means even the people who could do leverage, they're like, I don't know if I want to pay a 6% interest rate when before it's four, whatever it was. And then on top of that, we're issuing more stocks than has ever been issued before in a month's time in, the, in this New York Stock Exchange. And you're sitting there thinking, so it's supply, 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 and also you're taking away demand. So when you take away demand and you increase supply, you know what happens? The prices go way down, way down exactly what happened here. And that did not cause a great depression. It just did not. But that's what happened. So now you guys say, okay, so that, so again, if we're down uh, 38%, that means we got to go up 68% to get even, just to break even. All right. Now check this out. This is their max historical, and I'm going to show you the book I got this from, the max historical annual loss. And we break it down, stocks to bonds, using the S&P 500 to stocks, and the, uh, the intermediate bonds, uh, government bonds as bonds. Maybe it's, I can't remember, I think it's the intermediate bond. It might be Lehman Brothers. They used to be the, called the Lehman Brothers Aggregate Bond. Now they call it the Bloomberg Ab Aggregate Bond. I, I can't remember what he's using for an aggregate bond, but it's just your basic intermediate term bonds. So if you have a 3070 portfolio, your max, max historical loss was 14% in any given year, by the way, in any given year, a 3070. 4060. In fact, if you look at like Wellesley, Wellesley was down 10% uh, in night in 2008. What was well? Anyone want to look up what Wellesley Fund, V W I N X, what was Wellesley down last year? If you don't mind looking up. So I think it might have been down worse than that last year. So look up Wellesley Fund. Maybe you can, Denise, uh, V W I N X. And let's see what Wellesley did uh, last year. I'd like in 2022, 2022, excuse me, 2022. So now you got a 14%. All right. So 14%. What does it have to mean? What does it have to go to go up? No, you guys can figure that out. So if we have a 14%, so 24% means it has to go up to basically 50% right here. Here we had a 38%, had to go up 60. So this um uh let's see, it's right here, 25, 24. So we got to go up 33%, excuse me, 33%. Here is basically got to go up 60%. You see what I'm saying? So what we have here, that's not a squirrel, it's a chipmunk. Just post squirrel. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So anyway, you probably I, I don't know off the top of my head which you have to go up, but you can figure it out quite easily. But you got to go up more than 14%. We know for a fact this means you got to go up 33% to break even. This means you got to go up 60% to break even. All right, so that's the losses. If you're down in your first year like that, dude, you got to go up. You can't, where I'm going with this, you can't afford it. So now I'm going to show you this right here from this book, Advanced Retirement Income Planning by my man, Jim Odar. Uh, so Wellesley was down 9%. That's it, huh? That's crazy. That's, Wellesley was down 9% in the worst bond market we've ever had. Thanks, who, who, uh, thanks Sam. Look at Sam. Sam's crushing. Denise is just slacking. Denise got too many squirrels she's looking at. Oh, boy. Wellesley was down 9%. That's crazy. All right, so now I want to show you here. So my man's book, Jim Otar, who I'm trying to interview. We've been emailing back and forth, but uh, oh, boy. And he lives in Canada, so we won't hold that against him. Because you know, blame Canada, blame Canada. So one second. blame Canada. Justin Trudeau, he's my favorite guy ever. He's really legit, and he's not uh, Castro's son. Justin Trudeau is not Castro's son, and Emmanuel Macron is married to a woman. And Barbara Bush is not a man. Barbara Bush is a real lady, too. And Big Mike, I don't see what you don't see what I'm reading. I put the book down, so I'm reading this book right here. Uh, Advanced Retirement Income Planning by Jim Odar. Um, so anyway, so this guy I've been following for many, many years. He's a guy who's you know kind of challenges some of the ideas. Uh, Barbara Bush does not know, but you know we know he, he was a man too, like Macron. Trudeau has the best costumes. Yeah, he is committed. Trudeau, Castro, Justin Castro. So he's written a lot on uh, for many, many years, and he's retired now. There he is. 
um, an old guy. Uh, just good guy. So I'm trying to get him on the show here one of these days. And we'll see. We'll see. Because uh, I like what he writes. So he had written a thing challenging, not challenging Monte Carlo, but kind of giving you, and it's, he talks about his book, the problem with Monte Carlo is like I've told you before, is that uh, first client reporting from Philippines, reporting for duty right on CB, uh, is, is that Monte Carlo, again, as I said a million times, is, is completely random. And we know investment isn't random. And that's a drawback of Monte Carlo because it says, hey, what happened yesterday has no effect on what happens tomorrow. We just that's, we just know that's not true. But be that as man, I like Monte Carlo because it works, man. You take a standard deviation, you take an expected rate of return. And the standard give, deviation gives you literally the variance around the expected rate of return. And you've got three standard deviations. you got a pretty good gauge of what your potential could be on the positive and negative. It works pretty well. There's always a black swan. I think actually he shows in here. No, it wasn't this one. It was another one I was reading about. Uh, uh, oh, man. Uh, when the Monte Carlo model... When the Monte Carlo model randomizes everything, including events within a cyclical trend, there is a one in 16 chance of modeling the sequence of events correctly. For example, if you run 16,000 Monte Carlo simulations, only 1,000 of them uh, will have the correct pattern for a typical business cycle. The remaining 15,000 simulations will be incongruent with these typical patterns. Because we never know which 15,000 simulations we need to discard, the entire simulation becomes useless. That's kind of what his take on Monte Carlo is. Um, and I, I kind of agree with that. But at the end of the day, what I like about it is you, you kind of say, okay, if my expectations are good, you know, like for bonds, I think we have a pretty good gauge of what bonds are going to do. The current yield on bonds with a 90 to 95% probability is what you're going to get for the next five to 10 years. Really, it is. Um, as such, if the current yield is 3%, you're probably going to get about 3% rate of return on bonds. It's just, that's it, man. That's that's pretty easy on bonds. So if you run Monte Carlo simulations on that, yeah, you can say 16,000 simulations, only 1,000 be, will be correct. But yeah, I mean, that's very, very small. Um, you're not, it's not a wide berth there on bonds. Now, you factor in stocks, we don't know. Because remember, stocks, I always remember this, guys. Stocks have a very limited downside is this, zero. That's it. Stocks can go no less than that, unless you're leveraged and you don't want to be leveraged. Uh, so it can go no less than that, but they can go to literally way up here. So, I mean, so we know for a fact our downside risk is, is that's it, man. We know exactly what our downside risk is. We lose everything. With that said, we have such a wide range of the upside. That's what makes the volatility. So, you know, we, we just don't know. We don't know. But, you know, if I use a 17% volatility for the S&P 500, which I do, uh, with a total stock index, and that, that's if you look historically. I can't believe you're saying look historically. Yeah, but if you know, you look historically, seventeen percent standard deviation makes sense. That just means on any given year, you could be down, you know, forty five percent, and that's that's basically what the market has been since you know the beginning, the beginning of the the markets that we've had. Could, does that mean there can't be a black swan that it goes down fifty five percent? No, there can be. Does it mean it's likely? No, not at all. All right. What else could you really use beside Monte Carlo? Yeah, I, I, I don't think you could. I think that's the only thing you could use. The, the drawback about Monte Carlo, though, is that we just sit there and say, I don't know exactly what the expected, what the rate of return, my expectations are going to be. I don't know. And I, uh, and I don't know what the standard deviation is. But, okay. We also don't know if you're going to live tomorrow. We don't know what your life expectancy is. So I, I, the people who challenge the Monte Carlo, I get it. I get it. But, I mean, what else are you going to do? Because we don't know the future. Um, I saw someone said you need uh, someone, if not needed right away, draw from Social Security at 65 or 401k. Um, there is some Monte Carlo simulations that let you add in black. Swan. Yeah, but then you got to predict what the black swan is. And I don't know. Uh, all right. So Jeff says, if I have Social Security four hundred one k to do anything, having two pensions, which to pull from first? I'd pull from my four hundred one k first. All right. So let's go into this a little bit. Um, I want to share with you guys this uh, right here because I want to. I found it. Yeah, there it is. All right, sweet. All right. So this is interesting. So this book I was kind of disappointed in actually, and I like Jim and I, I like his stuff. I. Uh, I just kind of disappointed, and I can't re exactly remember why I was disappointed. I just like, eh. Um, 
uh, it's it, it got very complex. And when I say complex, I don't mean complex like mathematically complex, but he had all these like discretionary buckets. What else do you have? Any? It's just a lot of stuff. I was like, oh boy, um, I don't like all that. I'm a, you know I'm a simpleton here. So he's got basic expenses, essential expenses, expenses, discretionary expenses. He kind of models it for all that. I'm like, oh, see, I hate that crap. If, you know, if you like, I just, the, the issue, why I started the two bucket thing as opposed to the three bucket thing. So, you know, I've done oh, dozens and dozens, probably hundreds of seminars. And when I say, well, a negative 30% wouldn't be a black swan. Though. I mean, a negative 30% is going to be in any uh, standard deviation of, you know, 15% or more for sure. So that's not a black swan. Black Swan would be a negative sixty percent. Uh, that's would be Black Swan, and then you say okay, and, and then we go back to two thousand seven, eight, nine. It was down fifty seven percent, and then you can go large cap uh, growth stocks in two thousand one and two. It's down like eighty percent. So those are Black Swans. So thirty percent. That's, that's just a run of the mill bear market. I don't even think fifty seven would be a Black Swan. Uh, that's what happened in the S and P five hundred, but. I, that's over 18 months. And I, I just, I don't think that would even be a black swan. I think you're really looking at black swans, you know, up to 70 and whatnot. But again, I mean, we'd have, if I have a 45% downside risk with three standard deviations, then a 57% would be a black swan. But that didn't happen in 2008. That happened from 2007 to 2009, over an 18 month, uh, 18 month you know, period. I could teach him how to be a, hey, look at dark horses back. All right, good. So, I feel like the economy is in a, I don't know what HISA is, and a retirement account is all you need. Um, does taxes paid for Roth conversions count towards uh, 4% safe withdrawal route? Well, the 4% safe withdrawal is actually you're pulling money out to spend so that they don't, they're, they're not mutually exclusive, but they're not, you know, they don't have to flow together. So your 4% rule is how much you're pulling out of your portfolio in which to live on. And I would I, I would make a case that a lot of the financial advisors don't use taxes or investment fees as part of their high yield savings account. Gotcha. Um, oh, what I'm saying. Okay, look, yes, I see what you're saying. I feel like in this economy, a high, I, what I'm saying. Well, I don't know about retirement account, but a growth of investment account. I completely agree. Uh, uh, I feel like this economy, a high yield savings account and a retirement account. I would say a, a brokerage account and a savings account. Yeah, what I'm saying. I. I uh, I completely agree, man. Completely agree. All right. So going back to this guy, I just, the, the stuff like that, just like we, we do this, we do this, we do this. I'm like, ugh. Anyway, so I was doing all these seminars and you can see when you talk about the three buckets, you have bucket income, uh, your cash bucket, your income bucket, and your growth bucket. And you can say, okay, when growth goes up, you dump it in the income bucket. Uh, then you can take the proceeds from the income bucket, you know, at some point you put it in your cash bucket and you just have this, and you can just see people like, ugh. I was like, all right. So I, that's where I knew. I said, all right, we're going to have to have a two bucket. And my two bucket, I, ideally, would be like the Wellington Fund or Fidelity Balance Fund or the Fidelity Puritan Fund. Uh, I don't know what other funds are out there like that. 70-30 stock to bond with four years of cash. Just two buckets. And I just simply say, if the Wellington Fund is up, that's where you pull your money from. If the Wellington Fund is down, that's where you pull your money from cash. It's just that simple. And you can see people, oh, okay, that makes sense. Um, I keep it simple, 100%. I like to keep it simple. Stupid is the kiss way to go. Brian's trying to kiss me. Brian, I'm taking. I, in, a, in a different life, I might be willing to experiment. You know, I might be willing to, Brian, but I am taking. Brian's like, the kiss is the way to go. I want to kiss Josh. I want to kiss Josh. Nah, I'm not, not, not trying to experiment. Maybe in my younger days, Brian, with a, a bunch of Guinnesses, I might have said, that Brian's a good-looking guy. <sighs> no. Do buckets change after reaching RMD age? Why would they? Why would you need to change them after reaching RMD age? I don't think so. Because you still, uh, no, 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 Brian, you, no, you're trying to kiss me, dude. You're trying to kiss me. Now you're trying to back up. You're like, I didn't mean it. You're reaching out. You're saying maybe Josh is, maybe you'd be interested. And you're like, hey, I'm just going to throw it out there. I want to, Josh, no, no, no. That's, uh, that's not what you're trying to do, man. You're trying to say, that Josh is so attractive. Yeah, I don't know why buckets would need to change after RMD age, Denise. I mean, you know, if you think what would – because remember, RMD is – I mean, whole, the whole point about the bucket is where you're drawing your money from. That's it. So your RMDs, you're still got to draw money out. <laughs> oh, wait, Josephia. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. All right, so let's go back into this right here. 
Um, so this is pretty interesting. So we're going to drop this. And so the, the, the middle chapters of this book were fantastic. And this is what I'm going to talk about here. I, uh, I, what I did not like then, again, I, it's not that I didn't like it, but I just felt it got a little bit too detailed. And, like, and for me, I just don't like it. All right. So here we got percent loss. Oh, right, uh, yeah, right here. Yeah. Percent loss. 10, 20, 30, and 50. You guys hearing all this stuff about the, uh, like, what's that guy's name? Puff Daddy, whatever that guy's name. And all these people, like all the blacks who are uh, like sold their souls for freaking rock and roll that like some of the black people are talking about, like Jason Whitlock and stuff. You know, it's, you know, Kanye West and whatnot, Candace Owens. It's crazy. Like some of these guys are just freaking like literally they sold their souls, man. It's crazy. I, I don't know if y'all been following that, but it's like, man, to take a ticket, you know, for 40 years of fame and fortune, I just, you know, to take a permanent ticket to sell your soul to Satan for like 40 years is crazy, man. I, it, anyway, that's probably why Jesus said a rich man has a harder time getting to heaven than an elephant, a camel going through the, uh, the thing of a the needle because he's like, dude, when you're rich like that, you've, Sold your soul for rock and roll. Crazy. All right. So if we have no withdrawals, we got 2% withdrawals. We got 4% and we got six. All right. So what we're doing is historical probability of breaking even after a loss after three years. All right. Historical probability of coming back to even after a loss of after three years. So at 10%, our his, he's using historical numbers now, which I think is okay. Again, historical just sets a precedence. What you, you can't say I can expect that, but this is what happened in the past. I think it's, you know, again, I would not plan to say the same thing will happen in the future because no one knows. But I think it's interesting nonetheless. Uh, keep it simple, make it fun. Kiss my F. So Dan's want me to kiss his fanny. Dan's like, Look, Dan, I just, why you guys got to make it like all sexual in this? I'm just trying to be a caveman. Dan says, kiss my F, kiss my fanny. That's what Dan's saying. Oh. Yeah, 100%, dude. We're uh, we're all rich. That's, that's my thing that actually drives me up. One of the things that drives me up the wall with complainers, how bad it is in America. I'm just like, I just, dude, I, it, it drives me crazy. I'm just like, are you, uh, I mean, what? Financially, economically, convenience wise, can uh, just, you got more freedom still here than, I mean, we can argue about this to our blue in the face, but at the end of the day, man, no, 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 my in that. It, I just don't, I just wish people had more you know, appreciation for how good it is here. The crazy thing, some of these people travel all over the world with their stupid, you know, study abroad courses and whatnot. Like, how do you come back here and sit there and say, you know, this place sucks or we're doing, I just, I don't get it. And the people say, well, it's so much, it's, it's so much you know, better back in the old days. I was like, it just, some, whoever says that needs to read my book, relax and retire. I think I got it over there because you just, you're, you're missing, you're, you're, you're completely missing the point. Now there are some issues with buying a house. I don't, uh. I don't really, I don't argue against that. And part of the reason is because of regulation and the uh, cost of freaking build. I mean, that's just a fact. Dude. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they got so much regulations on building anymore. It's like, you know, we got, I mean, every, it's just, it's expensive. And now what, California mandating a certain amount of solar photovoltaic. And I mean, whole thing's stupid. Um, so they're just, you know, the regulations on building. But at the end of the day, I'm like, dude, this is the place to be. And, and I hate to say it, but you know what else was bad? If you're a farmer in Oklahoma in the 1930s, that was bad. And so what'd you do? You moved to California because that's where the opportunity is. So if, let's just say you're a young buck. You're like, man, I got, I'm 25 years old and I'm living at home because I can't afford a house. And I'm living in freaking, I don't know, we'll just say freaking Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm just like, it's too expensive. You can find a place where it's not as expensive. It's crazy. I know. You can, I, you can go someplace else where it might not be as expensive. Crazy. And then people are like, well, the, the median home is like 350000 bucks, and the mortgage is 7% right now. So, you know, so I'm only making 80000 a year or 60000 a year or 40000 a year. I can't afford the median home. Why would you want the median home? 
Why would you want the median home? You, everyone starts the starter home. I just, I don't get like, why would you want the median home? If you're just starting out, you start with a starter home. And if it has to be a double wide trailer, start with a freaking double wide trailer. If it has to be a single wide, start with a single wide. But well, well, my parents did it. Guess what? The house, the size of the houses today are significantly higher than they were 40 years ago. That's just a fact. Just a fact. Yeah. Bus leaves town every 100%, man. Even look at pulverizer gets it. Yeah, so much better in France. Yeah, exactly. They all say the same thing about England uh, National Health Service, too. I was like, yeah, well, good luck with that. Good. Wait, wait till you get a hip replacement. Live at home for as long as you're welcome, and you can deal with one of Dude, I can agree more. I, I 100%, man. Um, live, live at home as long as you can, 100%, and save that money, and then you can buy a house later on. I could not agree more. Um, yeah, I got a friend who is working for Google. Who I, I from high school, and I don't. I don't. He's been there a long time. That guy's got to be a multimillionaire. And the funny thing is, a nice guy. You know, I haven't talked to him in years and years and years. But it's just like, I'm not knocking single wide. Just a lot of people think a single wide. Oh my goodness, you know, this trailer park. But, dude, you've been in these. At least I haven't been a single wide in a long time. But I've been a double wide. He's double wide, and you don't even know it's double. I mean, come on. I mean, they're they're. Uh. Yeah, 100%. All right. So it's, uh, people, are, I, I completely agree. Oh, you're just like the baby boomers must be nice to have everything just handed to you. I'm like, uh, that's another thing I hate. I'm not a baby boomer. And I, uh, and I get it when, uh, look at my man 610 boating. Holy crap. It's one of my biggest, uh, adversaries on YouTube. But he, people, young people want to start on third base. I, I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna lie to you. Um anyway, so uh what the hell was I saying? Oh, uh, a lot of these baby boomers uh had a whole lot worse than you did, kiddo. That's just a fact. I just I don't like the bat the continuous bashing of baby boomers. Well, they had everything handed to them. Uh Vietnam War. I'm just throwing it out there. You know, many were drafted to go to the Vietnam War, they had everything handed to them, gas lines, you know what I'm saying? I mean, they had everything a cheap college, yeah, cheap college. How many actually went to college? They all had pensions. No, they didn't. I just the whole thing is stupid, dude. I, I just get so sick of like the baby boomers had everything handed to them. Like, really? Because uh, you know, my parents are baby boomers, and if they had everything handed to it, then what happened to me? Because we didn't have crap. I'll tell you that right now. Uh are you B and H son Zach? I don't even know what that means. Yeah, one of Brian's so freaking stupid. I hate that crap. And then they'll blame, but then the baby boomers will blame the younger generation too. And then, you know. The younger generation is a miserable bunch, but some of these kids are freaking crushing, man. Some of these kids are crushing. That's just a fact. Uh, <laughs> Nice, I don't think you're a boomer. I don't think you are. I think you got to be born in 1960 or earlier. Ted said he uh, remembers the moon landing. <laughs> Watch this. Many people remember what they saw on TV, kind of like how I saw. Uh, I just posted a thing on my Facebook page about the nuclear bombs going off to you know, they're testing in Nevada, taking out American villages. I said, Oh, that looks real. That definitely looks real. Oh my goodness. Yeah. But not all. Um, yeah. But there's some young guys that are crushing, man. I, I, I'm not at all at all. Like, I mean, I'm concerned about their, their mental health uh, for many of them. Uh, but there's some young guys that are crushing for sure. Oh, dude, I could not agree more. Illegal immigrants, legal immigrants uh, are the ones keeping America great. I could not agree more. I, uh, I was watching this uh, YouTube channel, uh, this video today on Twitter of these, let's put these urban types, if you know what I'm saying, just ransacking the store that was man, you know, run by, it looks like Indians or something like that. I said, I just, you know, we had um, American citizens, you know, just going in there with, with no hats on or anything. You can see who they are, just ransacking the store. They didn't do anything. And then you had these Indians who I, I guarantee are first generation who came here, put their capital at stake to start that store, went into an urban area to start the store to give to the opportunity for some of these people to have a place to shop. Um, I just, the whole, that, I, I will take those Indians 10 times out of 10 of those freaking clowns, 100%. 
they should all be in jail and they should be in jail until, uh, you know, I, I just, I'm sick of it. You know what I'm saying? I'm sitting there thinking, and everyone's like, where is it? And like idiots will say, where's their parents? They don't have parents. I, I don't understand. This is the problem. There is no mom and dad. There is no mom and dad. That's everyone's like, oh, the parents should be police sent up. I, I, when I hear that, I'm like, you've got to come to the modern modernity. There is no parent. And if there is, the parent's probably part of the problem. I just, I don't understand this craziness. But anyway, so if I'm an Indian, I'm like, I'm not opening a store there anymore because it's too expensive. I can't afford the freaking product and replace it. And they say, oh, you have insurance. Yeah, guess what? Insurance costs money. And guess what insurance companies do? They raise the fees. Oh, guess what else they do? They don't offer you insurance anymore if you're in a certain place that's likely to be stolen from and violate all the time. Oh, guess what else insurance companies don't do? They don't give you some homeowner's insurance if you live on a coast area because it's too risky for them. Shocking, shocking. So, I mean, it's just, it's just, and then people have sympathy. And these people are eating candy bars, taking candy bars. I, I take those immigrants anytime. No, no, is that, okay, I think you're right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can know qualm about Indians. Their culture is very wide berth. There's a lot of, you know, because there's a lot of different, you know, Indians. That's for, I don't like the Indian food. I'll tell you that right now. I don't like the Indian food. The Indians can be, we have a lot of Indians running around here. And they're just, you know, they're just, they can be very aggressive, if you know what I'm saying, uh, for success. They very much want success. Very aggressive. Um, I think a lot of newcomers are very aggressive like that. You know, the Asians that come here, the Vietnamese and whatnot, the Indians, I think they can, the, you know, the, the Africans too. A lot of these people come here to crush and they're not, you know, they, uh, and they, they come across sometimes as, as more aggressive than we will, but in some ways you can't really blame them. That's for sure. But, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, let's put it this way. You're not going to have to worry about Indians freaking gangbanging you, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure there's some. I'm sure there's an Indi Indian mafia. I know there's the Asian mafia. I get all that. But, you know, at the end of the day, if we didn't have these immigrants coming in here, it, it'd be it, it'd be worse off. Because, sadly, we've just we got the boomers had everything hand to them as these guys are sitting there on their phones with their tattoos, with their freaking brand new phones, eating their mom's dinner and all that. I'm like, screw that, man. I'm a. I'm so sick of like, oh, the boomers. I'm like, oh, the ones who, uh, um, uh, Indian food doesn't do it for me, Joe. Joe says, I can't handle flavor and spices. Yeah, I'm look, dude, I'm half kraut and I'm half mick. You know what I'm saying? The only flavor and spice I like is in a sack. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Oh, my goodness. Uh, millennials, 1995. Yeah, Indian food doesn't do it for me. Joe says, I barely, I'm barely a boomer. I grew up without much at all and worked hard for every dime. More kids there often split. How dare you, Jill? How dare you? Watch the moon landing in Brussels with the biggest small screen TV. You watch the presentation of what was a moon landing. All right, so let's keep going back here. Um, so if we're down 20% or 10% and we have no withdrawals, let me just make sure you got it right. Yeah. So historical probably probability of making the breaking back even after three years. All right. So 74% here. All right. 38% here. Four and zero. All right. So again, just quite simple. Three quarters of the time, if you have if you have no withdrawals and you're down 10%, you'll be back to where you started with. No withdrawals. And not like the video I did earlier today, I showed you if you're putting money back in, it'll reduce that significantly. But we're talking retirement now. Now watch what happens though. Watch the change. This is just the 2% withdrawal. 50% of the time, you have not broken even with only a 10% loss after three years. After three years. Break even. 50% of the time, and this is historical. It's my man, Jim Odar, Otar, who I, who has done the calculations. Have I uh, fact-checked everything? No, but I 100% believe it. If you have a 20% decline, 20% decline after three years, four out of five times, you're still back. You're still less than where you started with three years previously. Check this out. Uh, Potato sack. Maybe 
Can I be simultaneously very grateful and say everything wasn't handed to me? I served my country and enjoyed the benefits of being able to buy a house. Yeah, my was your bill. Can I be simultaneously very grateful? And yeah, I'm very, everything went ahead of me and I'm very grateful. Because in this place called the United States of America, you have a chance, even if you weren't handed everything, to make it, to make it happen. And just because I don't have a million bucks doesn't mean I didn't make it happen. I got four kids, got a beautiful wife, got two dogs, got a big fat house, you know what I'm saying? She got three, three cots and a hot, uh, three hots and a cot. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Watch this though. With a 30% decline, only 1% and then zero here. That crazy? So after this kind of loss, look at this. Oops. The majority of the time with just a 20% loss or more, you weren't back to even within three years. And that's even with not taking any money out. Now watch out and watch the 4%. This is where it gets... Uh, everyone thinks AI is new. Look, they did it back in 1965. The flag is waving in no atmosphere, 100%. You know what they're gonna say that though, Brian? They're gonna say, Well, they had it. No, oh, just this, they have excuse for everything. You're like, You didn't see what I saw because you refused, not you, Brian. They refused to look at like the, the flag waving when it comes back and forth into the camera, out of the camera. That's the flag waving. What they'll say is, Well, the stick and the blah blah blah. I say, No, we're not talking about that one. We're talking, I'm talking about. It comes, it's in the camera, it's out of the camera, in the camera, out of the camera. Account for that. Like, well, Neil Armstrong, he didn't walk by. He was already into the limb. A lunar rover. Not crazy. All right, so 4%, watch this. 38%. 5% on 20, zero and zero. So look at that. If you're only down, so I want to point this out. If you're only down 10%, and someone said Wellesley last year was down nine or 2022 it was down nine and 2008 was down 9.8. Wellesley was only down, was not down 10%. And yet even with a fund like that, and if you're taking 4% year out, which is, you know, the 4% rule, you're still 62% of the time. You're not back to even after five, after three years. But then if you went to 20% decline, I mean, that, that's, I mean, hell, we had that in the Q4 2018. We had that in uh, 2022, the stock market, the SP 500. Never mind what we had in that 2008. Never mind, we had in, nine, in 2000, 2001, and 2002, 73, 74. And then, of course, if you're down 30% or more, you know, you're, you're not getting back to even. And here's 19100. So you can see right there that. Basically, if you're down 30% or more, you're not getting back to even within three years. Not at all. And, and that's how many people be comfortable with that? And people say, well, you know, I can afford it. 2008, I could have I could handle it. Yeah, 2008, you were still working. You had to retire. So watch, watch this. We'll do the same thing here, though. This will be after, after 10 years. I'm going to keep those up there. There we go. Blink. This will be after 10 years. I'm just trying to tell you guys. I got people every now and again. Josh, I know you like the money markets, but man, I'm missing out on X, Y, Z. Well, yeah, you're missing out for a reason because there's volatility in there. So this is after 10 years. And I, I don't know, man. I think I should get back to the market. I said, why are you saying that now? Why are you saying that now? How come you weren't saying that in at the end of 2022? Well, because the markets were down. So we're saying it now at the end of 2023 and into 2024 because the markets are up. See how that changes? So we're saying I'm <laughs> at the end of 2022, I did not want to take any more losses. Okay. So we put you in, I, you know, again, I don't manage money. And so, so we put you in a, a heavy cash position. We're making 5%. And you're like, oh, that's good. That's good. At the end of 2023, man, other people are making more. I'm only getting 5%. I'm like, okay. But what is increased between 2022 and 2023? What has increased? Your downside risk. Why? Because you're coming off a large upside. Anytime there's a large upside, inherently your downside risk is increased. Now, you can make an argument that there's some momentum. So a large upside begets whatever it is, another large upside potentially. I don't, I don't think large upside 
he gets another large upside. The large upside could be get another upside, but as even the higher you get, the more downside potential risk there is for sure. The risk is always limited when you're already falling off the cliff. I mean, if you're already down 25%, there's not likely of a chance you're going to be down another 25%. Uh, give me any historical evidence that it happened. 73, 74, wasn't like that. 2001 and two, wasn't like that. We didn't get down to 9, 12, and 22%. Uh, 2007, 8, 9, you know, we're down 37% in 2008. And then we're down, uh, I think in 2009, we're, uh, we're actually up, if memory serves. Uh, the Great Depression, uh, let's see, we're down... 44% in 1930. Yeah, it wasn't anything like that. I mean, maybe the 1931 and 30, no, I think 1930 and 31 is down 40 and 22% respectively. But then we had deflation and so bonds did great. So um, there's never been any instance where the markets were down 25% consecutively ever. And so if it's down 25%, the likelihood of being down another 25% or more hasn't ever happened before. Again, it could happen, but that, I mean, that'd be a black swan of significant, uh, of just significant. So it's never happened before. Um, everyone makes money. A bear is a, uh, everyone makes money during a bear, but bulls get slaughtered right on James. So this is probability after 10 years. And this is just, again, using, um, 20, 30, 40 historical numbers here. So no withdrawals after 10 years, 97, 92, 78 and 30%. Isn't that crazy? Even after, oops, this is 50, excuse me. So after 50% um, percent down, down, only 30% of the time we're back to even. That's crazy. All right. Let's see what else we got here. All right. Uh, by the way, this is an asset mix of 40% S&P 500 and 60% fixed income. Rebalance annually is what he says. So it's a 40-60 portfolio. Um, yeah, okay. There we go. All right. So let's keep looking. 2%. This is after 10 years. How long it takes to get back to even after 10 years? Crazy. 2%, 81, 61, 40, and 3. Now, if you're down 50%, your goose is cooked. It's just all there is to it. I mean, there's just no other way to, to account for that. Um, 4% is 47% of the time. So if you're taking 4% a year off and you're down 10%, you're more than half the time, you're not even back to even after 10 years. Isn't that crazy? 47, 27, 12, and zero. And of course, zero, zero, five, and 20%. Now, I mean, this is back to even. Doesn't mean, you know, that doesn't, I'm not sitting there saying, oh, you're never back to even. You lost, you're, you're out, you're out down for the count. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying a lot of people don't want to touch their principal at all. And this is just going back to even. So here, Again, shoops, shoops. I would shoot. That's it. That's it. So after 10 years, the oh, right here, right there, too, I should say. So after 10 years of the, uh, oops, oh man, it's got a freaking marker on me. Hold on a second. Oh, oh man. After 10 years, got okay. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 16. Only five of 16 times was your portfolio back to even after 10 years if you're down these percentages. Isn't that crazy? That's after 10 years, man. It's nuts. Anyway, so that's, uh, that's pretty interesting. All right. Lastly, what I want to show you here on this is we're going to show you. This is pretty. Yeah, it's going to be hard to draw. Oh, yeah, it's going to be hard to draw. But basically, um. If you're taking initially 3% a year off, years for your portfolio, that's the time it takes to reach pre-loss median portfolio. Ah, I'm not going to go. All right. Uh, but anyway, he's got a thing in here. Uh, let's see if I can't read it. Notice that. Yeah. If you're taking after a 10% loss, 
if you're taking starting with 3% and then adjusting it upward with required distributions, that after a 10% loss is unlikely that your portfolio will ever reach its pre-loss value again. And that so this we're talking not just we're talking three percent, but increasing it with our with, with, with required distributions. It's unlikely if you're taking if you're down ten percent and you're taking your RMD starting with three percent. It's unlikely that your portfolio will ever reach its pre-median its, its value again. Will ever break even again. And that's the significance of losses when you're freaking when you're drawing down money. It's crazy. So if you're taking three percent a year out, just a fixed three percent. Adjusted for the inflation, I, I presume, because we're inflating the portfolio too. It'd take if your portfolio was down twenty uh, percent. It would take, and I can't really. I'm not really following that right there. Hold on a sec. Uh, down twenty percent. If your portfolio is down at three percent off. Yeah, I can't really follow what that. Says. Oh, 20 years. Yeah, that's what it says. Take twenty years. So if you're just taking three percent a year off. And your portfolio is down 20%, it's, it's going to take 20 years to break it even. 20 years to break back to even. Crazy. Anyway, so let's, I got to go on this side here. Um, oops. Can you all hear me? Am I here? I guess select a mic. Start cam. All right. I just unplugged my mic by accident. Can you all still hear me? You're back. Can you hear me though, pulverizer? Okay, cool. All right, let me just put this over here. There you go. Sit down. All right. Got my calculator. Don't need that anymore. All right, cool. Let's go over here and get. Oh, oh man, I'm getting old in my old age. I'm gonna play some ball with Liam today. Could not hit a shot. It's taking horrible shots. Oh boy. Anyway, so uh, uh, really, ten percent down. No, no, he, he didn't say that. He said 3% withdrawal adjusted for RMDs. He said 10% down. If you're 10% down, 3% withdrawal each and every year, you'll be back in 20 years. But 10% down. No, no, that's a 20. No, you're missing that. Excuse me. So it's if you have um, a 10% down, your portfolio is down 10%, and you're taking initially 3% a year off, but you're increasing it each and every year as the RMDs require, you'll never get back. So remember, it's three is three percent the first year, 3.2, 3.4, 3.6, and that's that's how required distributions work. So that's what he's saying. You never got back. If you have a 20% decline and you're taking a flat three percent a year without increasing it, you'll be back, you'll uh you'll be back to even in 20 years. So that's what he's saying. My, why would you say I'm saying not to invest in stock market? Where I don't get where you're getting that. Playing like LeBron, what's the, the portfolio? Was in that case was forty sixty S and P five hundred to uh, to intermediate bonds. VIGX is a pretty good run. I don't even know what that is. Some Vanguard fund. Just stay one hundred percent in growth stocks. Been the only thing working since the nineties. Really, one hundred percent growth stocks worked. Since the 90s, hmm. 100% growth stocks worked in the uh, in the aughts, huh? Okay. Uh, uh, down 30%. How tight can you uh, can you get your belt around expenses? Yeah, what I'm saying. When, exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's why new retirees don't want to spend much. They're like, man, I can't. I mean, a 10% loss. It's not going to kill me, but even that's painful. No matter a twenty or thirty percent loss. Um, that's why I can completely agree. Are people at, we're not actually are we're not actually arguing that growth stocks? Please tell me we're not actually arguing that growth stocks like this guy's Big Johnson here. Um, 
<laughs> that 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 growth stocks are the only thing working since the 90s. We're not actually arguing that, are we? Broken Arrow, you're not actually arguing, are you? Because that's uh, ex <laughs> not only did it not work, it got smoked. I think I say, uh, they got, I mean, I think Congress just wants to say they're doing something. I mean, it's, um, the, uh, the Congress, the RMDs, so the, I mean, because just because you have RMDs doesn't mean you have to spend it. And that's the whole thing is stupid about this. We're going to suspend RMDs. Why? I mean, you either need the money or don't. If you don't need the money, the RMDs aren't a factor in any way. Other than they have to pay tax on it. And most people's taxes retirement are pretty low. If you don't need the money, I mean, if you if you need the money, you're going to take the money out anyway. If you don't need the money, you still just got to pay tax. So the RMB suspension doesn't hurt, stop people from being ruined because they just take the money out, they pay a little bit of tax, they can reinvest if they want. And that's just uh, that's just a problem that Congress has to do something. To, and people want, we got to do something. That's what happened in COVID. You got to do something. What? Well, shut everybody down. Keep kids out of school. Put masks on children. Okay, what's the evidence behind that? <gasps> hey, we gotta do something. Is there even that much to spend on after time? Yet, that, exactly, man. If you don't have debts, um, I, I just, I, if you, I don't know what. I literally, I can't imagine what people could possibly consume all their income with if they don't have debts. I, I just don't know. So, I mean, I do the retirement plans all the time. You get out of debts and you just like as talking to this guy the other day, you know, anyway, I don't want to get too deep into it, but you get out of debts, you you just like, all right, I got my day-to-day -day living expense, my utilities, and utilities are a big expense. You know, I got my property tax, a big expense, my healthcare expense, it's a big expense. But on that, if things go south, I'm just I'm just gonna live at home. And in fact, if you look at the numbers, which I have over here, I thought, yeah, problem upstairs. Most people eat at home anyway when they retire. Most people eat at home. Yeah, a lot of people spend a lot of money on cruises. I grant you, and I mean that's fine for them, but uh, but they don't have to. Is where I'm going. That's that's a discretionary expense. Um, because of the market down, you are forced to sell. Well, you're not forced to sell. I mean, remember, you're not literally forced to sell. Um, you can literally sell to get the RMD out and then reinvest right away, or you can even do something even better, which is a uh, uh, a transfer in kind. You say, well, I got $20,000 of RMDs, Charles Schwab. That $20,000 is 200 of, of, X, of VTI shares. Just take it from my IRA account and put it on over my brokerage account. Don't sell. It's a transfer in kind. Um, yeah, I, I, eating out is crazy bad, uh, bad service and they charges a lot. And then you got to pay some expense for friggin' was I just listened to some guy talking the other day. It's like a 15% expense for healthcare for the staff and all that. Like, oh. And then they want you to tip you. And that's like, they want tips for everything. Like you go to the freaking, you know, I went to Wendy's today. They, they didn't ask this, but I went to Wendy's got one of those, uh, new, uh, frosties they have. That was not good. But usually there's a freaking place where they say, give me a tip. I'm like, no, I'm the, I'm the one who came to your store. Uh, is the Fed going to push back cuts? I don't think they're going to cut anytime soon. Yeah, I, I definitely. We've all been wrong in that regard. I, the inflation numbers are too high. I don't think there's any uh, cutbacks coming anytime soon. Um, yeah, so I don't expect it to happen. We'll see. Have T from 80s, good dividends. Uh, look at uh five percent money market waiting in yeah the problem with at&t is always like will they ever i think didn't they cut their dividend i can't remember but uh anyway so the issue is that you don't have to take your rmd i mean you have to take it don't get me wrong but you don't have to spend it you don't have to sell i mean if your brokerage firm requires you to do that there's nothing that says you can't turn around and take the proceeds and reinvest it right back in the same thing had. So let's just say your brokerage firm doesn't allow an in-kind transfer from a retirement account to a brokerage account to satisfy your RMBs. You still got to raise money to pay the tax, mind you, mind you, but still at the end of the day, that's the that's it. You don't have to spend it. So if the brokerage account doesn't allow you to do that, it's okay, sell my 200 shares, it comes out as cash, you know, three, you know, literally the next day uh, or two days from now, I can buy 200 shares back. Again, the whole thing with RMBs, it doesn't have to be consumed. I don't, and, and people got to recognize that just because it's forced to take out doesn't mean it's forced to spend. Um, I think a lot of people miss it actually, and I, uh, I wish they would not because RMDs 
they're nothing more than just the way the federal government gets their taxes. The best thing about a Roth, by the way, there are no RMDs. A Roth for I think didn't they just get rid of uh, RMDs and Roth 401ks? I think they might have. Either way, you just roll it to your Roth IRA. There's no RMDs. You don't have to worry about it. And there's no taxes either. And that, frankly, at the end of the day, we can easily make an argument that most people's taxes in retirement are lower by far than they'll be while working. I completely get that. What I'm saying. The issue is just like a mortgage. Two of the bigger expenses many retirees have, especially who have decent sized portfolios, is on taxes, on income taxes and mortgages too. And as such, no, I'm saying on Roth 401ks. That's what I'm saying. Is there, I'm, I'm saying, do they get rid of the RMD requires on Roth 401ks? Um, I, so Roth 401ks had RMDs. And I, I don't know if they, I think they got rid of it. Roth IRAs have had, don't have RMDs. But Roth 401ks did. So there was, I could have sworn they just passed legislation that says you don't have to take an RMD from a Roth 401k anymore. So the point being is you always want to make sure you transferred your Roth to your IRA to avoid the RMDs on your Roth 401k. But uh, uh, on, yeah, but that's what the same guy said. But I'm talking about Roth 401ks. I just want to make sure. So you guys keep saying the same thing. Um, three month e bill, you good to go, buddy? You good? What are you doing? Working out? You work out? Cool. Uh, yeah, but the vast majority of people don't lose 30% or more to tax. And the people who do lose 30% or more to tax are certainly are not eating bread lines. You know what I'm saying? Because if you lose 30% to taxes, um, that means you have pretty significant income. Or you have, oh my goodness. Um, or you have, all right, so I, Am I not being clear? I, I, we all know that Roth IRAs never had RMDs, right? I mean, we've all know that. I, I'm asking about the 401ks for Roth. Roth 401k. So I'm not I'm not sure if I'm not making myself clear, but there are no Roth IRA RMDs. Everybody knows that, right? If not, if you have a Roth IRA, there is no required distribution. If you have a Roth 401k, there used to be a required distribution, a Roth 401k. Not an IRA, a 401k. I think they might have got rid of that in some Inflation Reduction Act or whatever that was called, but I don't know for sure. So we're talking Roth 401ks, not Roths, just Roth 4. We got to be very, okay, there, that's what I'm looking for, Chris. We're looking at Chris. We're coming strong. Starting at 24, no RMD on Roth 401ks. Good, 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 good. Absolutely. Right on. That's what we're looking for. Um, yeah, but if you're losing 30% of your money to taxes, you got a hell of a lot of big retirement account. That's just a fact. I mean, you're talking a big retirement account, or you got a lot of income. One of those two things, and, uh, and as such, you're not running out of money. Um, again, if you could be, you could be one of the few. Not you, Jill, but you could be one of the few people that uh, you know that have such. You know, I've had clients like this. I've said this before. One of the reasons I did all my Roth, even though I'm making good money, is because I wanted to make sure when when uh, when you know hell hits the you know s hits the fan and i'm retired and i don't have another ability to make an income i wanted to reduce my outgoing cash flow if that meant i had to pay more now than i would have to in the future yes but at least i have those taxes now and not have to worry about now for a lot of retirees taxes aren't a big deal at all they're just not but i'm not a lot of retirees and i just want to make sure that for me when i'm retired that's not a big cash outflow because i'm telling you i've had clients they're like you know, we need a hundred thousand bucks, but they're only netting eighty-five thousand dollars, and they needed a hundred thousand bucks, which means they had to take one hundred twenty now to net a hundred thousand bucks. So they're paying a twenty percent tax rate on a hundred thousand dollar distribution because they live in New Jersey. They have high income tax there, high property tax there, and they got debt on their condo. I see this woman in front of me in my very eyes, and I'm, you know, she's probably passed now. But you have a debt on that; it's got to be paid. You got condos and fees. You got all your money in pre-tax IRAs. You live in the state of New Jersey. Property taxes through the roof. You know you need a hundred thousand bucks to get by. It's not a hundred thousand bucks. It's one twenty, and that extra twenty thousand dollars does a does does damage to your overall ability to sustain your portfolio. And I said, no, I don't want to be like that. I want to make sure that when I retire, that's behind me, one hundred percent. I want to make sure there's no mortgage, and I want to make sure there's no taxes. And yes, I I could have done better. I mean, literally, you could have done better. Say, look, Josh, but all that money that you paid in taxes to convert could have been in the market growing and growing and growing. 100% could have. 
but I could have also retired in 2007 and see my portfolio down 57%. And I still have to pay tax on the distribution. You see what I'm saying? So it's kind of like the people say social security is always a worse investment than stocks. I'm like, well, not necessarily. It depends on when you're pulling from your stocks. If you're pulling from in 2003, social security is a better investment. If you're pulling it from in 2009, social security is a better investment. It's just that simple. I mean, it's just, that's, there's no getting around that. Will social security be a better investment than stocks? No, the probability says no. But the one thing with social security, it's not probable, it's guaranteed. Oh, they're going to take the benefit away. All right. I get, I literally, I'm so sick of that argument because I'm like, yeah, okay, tell me, tell me when they do that. Tell me when they do take benefits away from taxpayers. I had, when, when do they do that? You know, my, my goodness, when do they do that? Um, I mean, when do they do it? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Could they do it in the future? Sure. Uh, what's the likelihood that your portfolio, this one drives at the wall. They start reducing Social Security benefits. What do people think happens to the equity markets when that happens? I, I don't know why people live in this mutually exclusive scenario. If Social Security is reduced, you'll wish you had more stocks. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, yeah, well, you don't do Roth conversions. You're going to big ACA subsidy, Andrew. No way. Um, no way, man. Because that, that, that you, those subsidies are worth their weight in gold. So when my kids, so even Charlotte said, when the kids are out of the house, we're going on ACA. So assuming that I don't make any money, let's just use, I mean, a little bit, let's just say I don't make, you know, between Charlotte and me, I make 40,000 bucks. And uh, we'll just live off our Roth and the proceeds of selling this house. We're not going to hardly have any, you know, we'll, uh, you know, we'll have $40,000 of taxable income. That's it. And a little bit of interest income. We'll get massive ACA subsidies. We're talking 20,000 a year potentially, you know, assuming that's still around. And that's well worth not doing Roth conversions. That's for sure. Um, You know, one man show and everyone grew up past five employees. Yeah, dude, I, I don't know how people, I just even having any employees. I don't get that's that's gonna suck. Love my abomination, uh, care plan 47 zero to duckle. How's the uh annuity return on principal does not count against ACA? No, no, it does not. How is the uh, the care though? Just because you it's got coverage doesn't mean you have care. So, health insurance is not health care. Josh, I love my, yeah, I mean, dude, if I just, look, if I do videos, I like doing videos, you know what I'm saying? I mean, at some point, I won't take any more clients, um, but, uh, say, you know, at some point, I'll be burnt out from it. But uh, if, you know, if I just do these videos, I, I'm just not sure the longevity of YouTube anymore, to be honest. I mean, since I started doing live streams again, I started up my Sunday, because I wasn't doing for on Sundays. And I'm doing shorts. My views have gone up, you know, quite a bit since I started, you know, kind of re capitulating to what YouTube wants. You know what I'm saying? So it's all okay, YouTube. Like, because my views were down and my revenue was down. I think revenue is not just down for me, it's down across the board because it's a tight market for advertising. But I said, okay. So I said, I got to, uh, I, I just got to make a Josh. Yeah, exactly. And right on. There you go. So look at my man, Joe, the computer guy. Uh, you know, he's got, uh, uh, care is very good. It's nationwide. Blue Cross Blue Shield. Love my doc. Good stuff, man. Uh, my thoughts on a SEP. Yeah, I just, I've never, I mean, I, I guess if you're making enough money to afford more into a SEP, um, then, uh, I mean, the SEP gives you, you can put more away into a SEP than you can a, a traditional IRA. And that's, there's some benefit there. But I've never been that big of a fan on SEPs. I used to deal with a lot of dentist practice, and they'd have a simple, and I always try to convince them to go to a SEP because they could put more in there. Um, but then we just went to 401k route instead. So I just, I think at the end, if you're putting in more than the 401, than the uh, the IRA, maybe a SEP. But I just do a brokerage account, man. I just do a bro. That's I don't do any. I just do a brokerage account because a brokerage account, I hardly get any dividends. I hardly get any capital gains, if any. And it's just, I don't get a tax deduction, but I don't want a tax deduction. That's why I converted everything. Um, four on, yeah, four on paper movement. Run them, in, brother. Run them, in. Don't forget AI Pablo right on. Yeah, and Dark Horse, I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you. Just coming on strong. It's okay. We're all pissed off. Don't get me wrong. I mean, the situation is is insane in the freaking country. I mean, but we're not, it's just. But there's nothing you can do about it. That's what that's what I want people to know. There's nothing you can do about it, man. 
I mean, so people think we're going to do this, do that. I'm like, no, no, it's just not. It's beyond our capacity. So what we need to do is be content in our own little area here. And just, you know, like Owen Benjamin says, which I like, you know, get to know 10 people within 10 miles, create your own little community and be content. And it's, uh, I just, just, that's all you can do. Be content. And at the end of the day, if we read a good book, yeah, take the black pill and capitulate. I do 100%. And it's, uh, and I still get pulled into it. I still get pulled into it. That's why I like to watch Owen Benjamin and Matt McKinley from Quantum of Conscious because they say, it's like, look, it's, you can get mad all you want and you can freaking get pissed off and you can do all this, but it's not going to change anything. The wheels are already in motion and they're going to do whatever they want to do. It's not a damn thing you can do about it. And, uh, and, and it's, you know, could you vote to change? Sure, you could vote. You know what I'm saying? I mean, does the voting change? Yeah, probably. All right, Denise, good night, man. God bless. Let's say a quick prayer for Denise. Dear Heavenly Father, we just pray for all people uh, that are just dealing with any kind of issue health-wise. And we know Denise is still dealing with some health issues, guys. So just send a prayer your way. And Lord, please just look after Denise. And, and anyone who's got health issues that they're contending with, just look out for them, Lord, and just uh, give them peace and serenity to know that you're with them always. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Denise, uh, I mean, she just, you know, she she literally died uh, like a year and a half ago or something like that. And, uh, and you know, so she's still dealing with that, uh, you know, coming back from the dead, essentially. You know what I'm saying? So it's, uh, it's one of those things that, you know, you just got to make sure that you're still, your, your stuff's in order because you just don't know. But, um, you know, she's still dealing with the, uh, the, the after effects, I guess you could say. Uh, bridging five years to make sure I do not pull on the downside. Yeah, what I'm saying, right? I could not agree more. You know, Social Security, uh, CDs, three, four, five year CDs, uh, guaranteed fixed income, um, uh, guaranteed fixed annuities, you know, and then some cash. And then just let that, you know, let your stocks do what they're going to do. I mean, man. Thanks, John. No, universal life insurance. Oh, I hate these insurance guys who say this. Universal life insurance is not better than a Roth IRA. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I mean, look, could it be? Yeah, if your Roth IRA was down 57%, like what happened to me in 2007 and eight, yeah, you wish you had some UL, universal life insurance. But what's the likelihood that your cash grows to the extent on your UL policy uh, that a Roth could grow? It's just not high. I mean, the, the issue is the universal life policy is, is, is not geared to give you the same potential for upside growth as a Roth. It's just not. And so you're not going to have that much cash value relative to what a Roth could. It's just not going to happen. Now, you're d the, the risk on the on the death, if you die, your freaking wife is loving that you had a UL policy with a large death benefit. But if you're going to have a large death benefit, you're not going to have that much cash value to begin with. That's what drives me crazy. So the universal life policy is wonderful. A, if it stays solvent, and many universal life policies don't, they go bankrupt before you, uh, they, they go, they expire before you do so there's no death benefit to pay but if you if you die with a large death benefit yeah your spouse or kids are loving life but a large death benefit means a large premium and a large cost of insurance the insurance company doesn't is not known for giving away goods so they're gonna say yeah you can get a large policy but we're gonna charge you for a significant cost of insurance on top of all the other fees they throw in there too just so your kids can have tax-free money when you die well, how about my cash value? Well, cash value is to be subdued because, first of all, most of the universal life policies is all in bonds. You know, they might have some higher, you know, uh, lower credit quality bonds in there to get a higher crediting rate, but it's not going to be anything like stocks. It's just not going to be. It can't. You could talk V well if you want a variable universal life, but then you got the fees that go with the, the funds in there. It's just, and then we're right back to V well versus Roth anyway, because variable universal life has the same fluctuations as the Roth does anyway. I hate that. I hate it with a passion. I see this on LinkedIn all the time. You know, fixed index annuities are better than your 401k. I just want to jump off a bridge. I want to stand at the top of the Empire State Building. I want to look down and see the freaking Hudson, whatever the Hudson freaking River, whatever that's called, with great white sharks in there who are hungry as can be, who don't like uh, MAGA guys. I want to you know, just give myself a little bit of chick of blood so the great white sharks can smell my blood coming. And I want to jump off the Empire State Building into the Hudson River and have the great white sharks devour me because that's how much I despise that stupid argument. 
uh, index life insurance, what the hell they call it, is better than a Roth or a 401k. I'm like, oh, I just want to go insane. Don't jump. I think I already did. I did jump. Oh, my goodness. I just want to say, cheese, swan dive, Going to let the great white sharks rip me apart. And then when I'm being ripped apart, I want Cher to sing, you can believe in life after love. I want to see the 57 Flavors flag just flying all over New York City. And I want Hillary Clinton to cackle with Kamala. That is like freaking, look at Perry Mark, about time. That, that is like literally the best thing that ever happened. 57 Flavors flags everywhere. Hillary and Kamala cackle uh, while, I'm, while I'm hearing Cher. You can believe in life after love. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, right here. There's Jill. My 401k was down 50% in March 2009, but it didn't matter because I was in my 40s and hadn't and hadn't stayed that much yet and was plowing a bunch in every year. Exactly, exactly. Was a safe withdrawal rate, uh, with, with a 4% withdrawal rate, was a safe inflation rate to take in. Yeah, that's the that's the challenge. So we don't know. So we always got to look at the, the issue is, yeah, I, I actually, I don't think they're necessary, but I do see the appeal and the, uh, international stocks having uh low valuations relative to the u.s I, I there is an appeal i don't have any frankly but i see the the argument that international stocks are cheaper relative to the prices to earnings and that means there's more upside i do see that argument um but i for me i'm just all u.s uh so a four percent withdrawal rate uh so basically if you actually look at the the genesis of the four percent withdrawal rate darren that was to include the 1966 and 1982 time frame where inflation was way above 3%. So yeah, I would say 3% inflation. So that's what, I mean, I use roughly about three and a half all, all in inflation and in right capital when I use. And the reason I do that because healthcare is a big expense and I'm inflating that at five and a half percent. So my regular inflation is three. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's three. Healthcare is five and a half. So all in inflation is about three and a half. But uh, I think that's, uh, I, I think there's something to be said about if you, if you can survive 66 to 82, 66 to 82 is the one we got to survive. No, yeah, dude, China's DOA. I mean, it's just, yeah, no, already in decline, 100%. I mean, literally, Europe's in decline, China's in decline, you know, uh, Korea's in decline, Japan's in decline. Well, well, I'm talking about growth now. I'm not talking about the countries. I'm, I'm just, from a population perspective, they are. All these countries are doomed um, in, this, in terms of the growth that we've come to expect. Um, and as such, you know, we, we, we can look at international markets and say these are all in decline, but they're still, they still have billions of people and they still have price earnings ratios that are quite small relative to the United States. I would never, ever, ever put more than 20% of my portfolio in international stocks, or my stocks. I would never, ever, ever put 20% of my stocks into uh, international markets at all. Between election year and AI, the stock market is up. I think this, the AI stuff is way overblown. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the thing, man. It's, uh, you just, you, you just, if you're working, you just keep plugging, man. If you're working, just keep plugging. That's what you do. That's why no one freaks out when they're in 2008, when they're down 50%, because they're just, I mean, people do, but they're just plugging, plugging, plugging. Like, ah, I'm just going to keep plugging. And when you keep plugging, you don't even notice it. It's when you're retired. Does VTI usually outperform B? I don't know what VT is. Let's take a look what VT is. Virginia Tech. It's, do you believe in life after love? VT. Oh, total world stock index fund. Yeah, so uh, I would, I mean, I would I would suggest that B, remember VTI and VT, none of these these ETFs have only been around 20 years or so. So we have 20 year track record. And and during that time, domestic stocks d- dominated international stocks. This is all there was to it. So yes, VTI over the last 20 years would have outperformed. Um, I would suggest that international stocks have underperformed to domestic stocks more often than not by pr- pretty significant factor. But there have been times international stocks have done better and they propped up a portfolio that's heavy in domestic stocks, 100%, 100%. So I'm not against at all having some international stocks. I just don't, I just don't. Uh, healthcare can be done by oneself. Health insurance is only for a safeguard for emergencies. Uh, any thoughts on investing in these companies? 
Motley Fool breakers, Motley Fool stock. I don't know. Any of I, I, I don't have, I don't pay for it seeking alpha, but, uh, uh, I, 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 I follow them on occasion. They have some good stuff on dividends. I like, but, uh, I don't follow them that much. I, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't have any issue. In it. I mean, I got no comment. I just say buy the BTI and be done with it. But some people like investing. I mean, some people enjoy it. They do. So, I mean, that might be you, Gordon. You might say, hey, I like to invest. And, you know, I, I like to get some ideas from you know, Bob Branker. Remember Bob Branker? I'm, I'm not sure if he's still around. Um, you know, some guys, you know, from uh, Motley Fool or some of that. I don't call that. You know, um, I don't. I don't like it. Um, it just it bores me. And I just know no one knows. I mean, this is the issue. Once you, you come to the conclusion that, Investing is just a guess. It's literally just it's taking a dart and throwing it at a, a stock chart. Some are going to win, some are going to lose. And uh, but I, I tell you, at the end of the day, like a video I did a couple weeks back, they got a lot of views, like twenty thousand views. If you miss like the top ten stocks or something, I can't remember what it was. You miss like you know fifty percent. You literally miss the top ten stocks. You miss like fifty percent of the entirety of the upside of the S and P five hundred. Going back to like nineteen twenty six, I can't remember the exact time. If you miss the top, man, like, I don't know, like 0.4% or something like that, I can't remember what it was. But if you miss the top um, it was 1%, you miss basically all the gains. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, everyone's looking for that one next Amazon or Apple or NVIDIA. But the facts are for every one of those, it's like you know, 50 that fall by the wayside. So it's just, you know, just be in the total stock and be done with it. But, you know, some people like to play around and dabble in individual stocks. I mean, as again, I own some individual stocks, but. At the end of the day, you should have a broad market for your your total portfolio. And then, if you want to, you know, have some fun stocks, that's fine. But your, the market, you need to have something that covers the entire market for sure. Uh, let's see here. When I stopped watching the news in 2019, all the blabbing of stuff never changed my life. Oh, what I'm saying, dude. I uh, yeah, look at that. I completely agree. I completely agree. Watching the news just pisses you off. It just does. And uh, and so I'm just like, why bother? I mean, it's just going to make me mad. There's nothing I can do about it. So why bother? You know what I'm saying? And uh, that's just what I look at. I say, right. you know, um, people who have more desire and, and, and heart. And you see, the, the problem is this is why we'll never beat the left anyway. Because the left is on this plane, this temporal plane. And, and I, are there Christians on the left? Absolutely. 100%. But generally speaking, the, the crazies are on the left. They're atheists. They're just lost souls. Uh, they're not even atheists. They believe. They just hate the, the God, the super creator. They hate him. They hate supernatural, the creator of all things for some reason. I don't know why because they think they should be the next author. They think they should be in the next band that everyone talks about. I, I don't get it. But they just hate him. And so they turn to the devil because the devil promises him revenge. And what suckers these people are. Because devil doesn't promise him revenge. I mean, he promises, but never delivers. That's why he's the devil, because he's a lying sack of crap. But but the atheists love it. I don't even think they're atheists. I just think they don't don't believe in God. I just think they hate God. I, there are some atheists, don't get me wrong. But anyway, so it's kind of like, it's like, all right, so all that stuff is, is for the left, this is it, man. This, this playing field, this temporal plane that we're dealing with is it. It's all they got. For those of us, I hate to say on the right, because I don't mean religion is a left versus right thing, but you know where I'm going with. We say it's a, it's, this is it. That we're eternal species with eternal God. And as such, what we do on this earth is important, but this is just the beginning for what waits us beyond in the supernatural realm. And as such, it's kind of like we're not going to – our mission is soul is to freaking be good to God. To glorify him, all we do, and trust, we all make mistakes. Hell, I do it all the time. To glorify God, love your neighbor as yourself, and make sure you raise your family the best way. That's all you can do. And everything else is secondary. Should you vote? Sure. If it makes you feel good, vote. I don't care. I'm going to vote. It does make me feel good. I think my vote does still matter to some regard. I'm going to do it. And certainly local elections, we know your local election vote matters. Absolutely. Your count, you know, city council and all that. But frankly, at the end of the day, eh. You can vote all you want. They're still going to do what they want. Still going to do what they want. You know, if you, if you get polled, should you answer the poll? Yeah, probably. Yeah, it, but but we don't. This this temporal plane is not for us. It's just not. Um, 
Yeah, so I'm 60. That's yes, I am on the Roth as well. I, yeah, Carl, because I, I at the end of the day, I just like, dude, for me, I'm like, I just think there's opportunity in bonds, and I and I'm still getting five and a half, no, five and a quarter of my cash. I'm like, I'm pretty comfortable with that. Again, at the end of 2022, if I would said I can get you five and a quarter in cash and no downside risk, remember the T bills are the risk free investment. That's what everyone compares themselves to. T bills are risk free. So I can't stress this enough. If you can get five and a quarter are risk free, inherently that means something <laughs> to take on risk has to do better than five and a quarter. And that, if that proposition becomes harder and harder and harder when you factor in the real reason stocks go up, which is earnings growth and dividend yields, because dividend yields are still in the crapper. It's the only thing driving stock prices are earnings growth. Or the thing you can't count on, price to earnings contraction, it goes it goes down. So the, the prices drop to get closer to the earnings or price to earnings expansion, which means the prices increase uh relative to the earnings so that's it man you got one of those two and those things are very very fluid so what is a pe expansion can quickly become a pe contraction yeah right, right on mark yep broke t bill and chill 100 uh you can be a good steward with your money if we lose it all it only sucks for our kids we end up dancing on golden sheet 100 for business Fox Business saying hedge fund manager upset they're missing out on the upside of these past few months. Glad I stayed in since 2010. Got out previously after 2008 crash. Hedge fund manager. Um, I don't believe God wants to ignore evil and just allow it to multiply unchecked. So what are you what are you supposed to do about it? And so Jill, I, I hear what you're saying, but what are you supposed to do about it? I mean, literally, what what's what's to be done? All right. So at the end of the day, what are you gonna do? You can go freaking you can go storm the capital. I mean, like, what the, was the other guy, Dark Horse, whatever he said, or if our ancestors had done that? I mean, that, see, that's the thing. It sounds good in theory, but what are spe what specifics are you going to do? Um, I only own individual stocks and cruise lines. Each, Yeah, whatever I'm saying. We talked about that before. Sweet Perk uh, holding their stock, whatever I'm saying. Uh, So, yeah, P contra. I mean, I, I tell you, man, don't wish. Uh, P contraction sounds good in theory, but that means you're literally your portfolio is down, and if you're retired, that's not fun. That's not fun. You're pulling money. I just I showed you earlier today what you know, even a ten percent decline, ten percent decline. So. So for me, I'm like, yeah, I, I mean, it's, the market's going to contract at some point, somewhere. And then we always got to remember, too, all right, let's just say we're down 10%. Let's say we got a million bucks, we're down 10%. We're like, man, I'm down to 900,000 bucks. But then just say, where were you five years previous? I was at 600,000. I was at 800,000. So you're still up. You're still up, even though we're 10% down. I think people, they, they're way too short time. They're like, man, I'm getting, uh, I'm down, I'm still down 10%. I'm like, from where? Uh, from where I was at the end of 2022 or something. I'm just using that for example. So, yeah, but where were you in 2017? Well, I'm way up. Yeah, were you taking money out? Well, yeah, okay. well, it seems like you're doing okay. If you look at the bigger picture, for sure. All right, so I think uh, anything else, anything else? Look, I'm not saying don't get mad if you want to, if you want to get involved in stuff. I'm not saying it. I'm just saying at the end of the day, I, I think the... Uh, for me, at least, for just like Joe, the computer guy, when I stop paying much mind to the politics, I just live a better life. I just literally do. I mean, I still I watch, you know, read uh, Jeff Childers coughing COVID, and I like to see some of these lawyers are taking, to, you know, are fighting back. I like it. Uh, there's another lawsuit I just read. It, my wife told me about. I forgot what it was. I said, no, I like. It. There's some good stuff. There's some people that are doing some good stuff. I'm not a lawyer, I'm not doing it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just not. Um, and some people have got the intestinal fortitude to, to take the fight to the, the, the bad guys. Not me. I'm like, yeah, go, go, uh, keep doing it. I'm, I'm just going to do the best I can in my little thing here, in my little realm, because, uh, it, it's not, it's not worth it for me. For me, I'm, I have volatile emotions and I don't want to get involved. I remember I was looking back, you know, being back on Facebook, reading some of my old posts of, man, I really want, the. Uh, that video I sent you emailed dovetails nicely. What the one with the dude talking to 
Bob Brinker's still alive. All right, good. I completely agree. Just, I mean, look. No, I just, I don't want to get into it. I just, it's, you, you got to move to a red county, obviously. And you got to vote local, obviously. You know what I'm saying? You got to make sure that your sheriff is righteous. I mean, all these things are important. You know, and if you're, if you got the intestinal fortitude, you should, uh, yeah, keep your faith strong. And your, I say keep your faith large and your circle small. Yeah. I am drinking Waterloo that Jill told me about, raspberry nectarines. Pretty good, but they didn't have the orange vanilla that Jill was saying at uh, my store, which kind of ticked me off. Uh, get enough info to be wise, but not so much you come foolish at what I'm saying. Yeah, I tell you, this, I tell you, my perfect portfolio is I got enough in cash, enough in bonds, and enough in stocks. It just is great. Is it the optimal portfolio? For me, it is. Because I go night and night. And it's the same kind of thing, man. The, uh, the simulation will run the program no matter what you do to try to change things. Yeah. I mean, I think at the end of the day, I think this stuff has been chosen. I do. That's ultimately what I think. I, like, I sit there and I'm wondering, you know, and I, you know, who knows? Man. I don't, but I think, has it really been control of our voting I mean, really, has it always been kind of already known in advance? But what did the 70s till now bring us by not paying attention? But what does paying attention do? Ignorance, no, but ignorance is bliss. <laughs> Literally, ignorance is bliss. If you're ignorant of the world going on around you, you're bliss. Does that mean it's, you're, uh, you're hiding under a bushel? Maybe. But what is literally the knowledge of the war in Ukraine or the knowledge of what's going on in Israel or the knowledge of the Houthis and all that? What does that do when you're like, man, I mean, just you see all these people like just on Twitter, all these people just yell. I'm like, Ugh, I don't want anything to do with that crap. All right. Uh, yeah, dude, if I ran for office, no, nah, I mean, the thing is. Look, I, this I, I said this about the guy in Maine, Elliot Cutler. So Elliot Cutler. Um, he uh, he was running third party of the governor of Maine, and the rumor was he was a Democrat. Not the rumor. the The Democrats felt that Paula Page won in two thousand ten or two. I can't remember. But he won twice. Pretty radical Republican for Maine. And the the rumor, not the rumor, the thought process was the uh, well define ignorant. What does ignorant mean? Who's ignorant? I mean, you got to define what that is. Yeah, politics is the same. What's different is the division of people enforcing politics in every facet of your life. That's what, yeah, I completely agree. I was like, dude, 100%. Um, but anyway, so Elliot Cutler ran, and uh, and because he's a third party candidate, he basically got enough votes from the Dems to take out the Democrat uh, in 2010 and 14, I'm most positive. Yeah, it was 2010 and 14. And the Dems were pissed at him because Paula Page won going away in 2014, but it was pretty close in 2010. And they blamed Elliot Cutler. And so then in 20, uh, 2018, if memory serves, um, stupid Janet Shills, who's a mayor now, the governor now, uh, she was running against was LePage. Did he step down? I think LePage might step down. I can't remember. But uh, Janet Shills was running against the Republican. I forgot who it was. And, uh, and there was rumors going around that Elliot Cutler was going to run against a third party. And the Democrats said, can't have that. So what they do is they found child porn on his house or his phone or something like that. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know what's going on with it now. But so he's disgraced Elliot Cutler. And you think they can't do that to anybody? You know what I'm saying? You think you think any of these guys, you think Joe Scarborough, for heaven's sake? I mean, you hear what happened to Joe Scarborough, with that girl that was end up dead in Joe Scarborough's office? I mean, come on, man. I mean, they got stuff on. They got stuff. They got stuff on that guy. And so they said, look, Joe Scarborough, you got a couple options here. I mean, they got stuff on everybody. And all these politicians, they're they're just, uh, you know, they just want, they want, they love the attention. They just love it. I mean, to be a politician means you inherently have got to be a narcissist. You have to be. You want people to respect you. You want people to kiss your butt. And none of these guys are worth much in terms of not financial. I'm just saying, you know, they're not, these aren't the smart people, the by and large of them. That's such like, so I can get rich in politics and famous in politics and get hot chicks in politics. Look at Bill Clinton. Yeah. You can get famous. You can get, I don't know if Bill Clinton ever had any hot chicks, but you can get hot chicks. You can get famous. You get rich. 
I mean, look at these guys. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, so look at George W. Bush. You know, he's not a smart guy. You get famous, I and mean, he was already rich from George Bush, the senior, who's CIA uh, founder or the director of the CIA, whose dad, by the way, Prescott Bush, was working in cahoots with the Nazis. Kind of weird there. But he was. While his son was being shot down over the Pacific, Prescott Bush was freaking in cahoots with the Nazis. Tell me that's not crazy. Anyway, um, what was I saying there? So all these guys like, look, dude, if you want to be part of this, just like what's going on with the blacks, talk about P. Diddy. Was that his name? Pup Daddy, P. Diddy, whoever these people, I don't know. You know, all these guys, you know what I'm saying? They're like, you know, Tupac. Yeah, it's like, dude, the whole idea that Tupac's is gangster. It's like, do you ever see his videos where he's like auditioning to dance? Dude, come on, man. That guy was, <laughs> give me a break. You're like, uh, okay. I mean, so all these guys got a ticket, and they all sold it. They all take a ticket at some point, and all these politicians do too. If they don't, they're going to be – look at John Roberts, for heaven's sake, the chief justice of the Supreme Court. I don't want to say too much, but just look at who he adopted, the controversy about John Roberts' adopted children. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of strange. You're like, uh, okay, they all got – they're all being held accountable. And as such, they do what whoever the powers that be say, be the Rockefellers, be the Rothschilds. I don't even know, man. I don't even know. But uh, anyway, Tupac's been dead forever. Yeah, but you know, I'm talking. Paul Bryce, you've seen the videos of Tupac dancing as a, let's just put, wait, not very manly guy, you know what I'm saying? And you're like, dude, come on, man. That guy, you know, give me a break. Um, ours need North Carolina in the president election. Yeah, I think they're, uh, yeah, uh, uh, to, yeah, Dave Chappelle. Um, he started speaking truth through his comedy. Yeah, but you know, even Chappelle, though, you know, like he's you just wonder at the end of the day, like, did he I mean, I don't know, is he yeah. the only people that really truly been banned has been like uh it was Owen Benjamin and a couple other guys. I mean, he couldn't do Airbnb. Uh he couldn't do Airbnb, he's never mind on YouTube. Uh, I mean he was he was uh, just no one else has been banned like that guy. Like, I mean, he literally can't be on YouTube. Uh, I mean, it's just that's how, like, no one's been banned like Owen Benjamin. And that sucks. It's kind of like if Dave Chappelle and all these guys are still making money on YouTube and all that, well, it's not because they're so much more brilliant than Owen Benjamin because he was making like 30000 a month on YouTube before they banned him. You see what I'm saying? And uh, even Alex Jones is, well, I guess Alex Jones, is he back on YouTube? I don't know, but he's back on Twitter as Owen is too, so. I mean, something has changed. Uh, Candace Owens is, yeah, so she'll be banned shortly, 100%. Yeah, Ben Shapiro does not like Candace Owens. It's funny. And no, it's, it's kind of like saying at the end of the, I keep saying at the end of the day, I don't want innocent Palestinians being killed. So you're okay with October 7th. First of all, I think October 7th was something very suspicious there. Let's just put it that way. Not okay with October 7th, the way the narrative, not at all. Um, but it's okay to not want innocent Palestinians killed and not be for October 7th. That, you know, these things aren't mutually exclusive. That's just, Milo disappeared. Yeah, that's right, Milo. That's right, he did disappear. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I was a Democrat going up. I've been a uh, libertarian slash conservative for a long time, but I'm now I'm more of a social conservative and a fiscal liberal, to be perfectly honest with you. And I'm not like fiscal liberal. I give the I'm just I'm fiscal liberal when it comes to social security. Let's put it that way. Um, I just you know I think there needs to be lots of restrictions on certain behavior. I'm not going to get much more into that. I don't like abortion. And I, uh, but I think at the end of the day, fiscal liberals, that means expand social security. I'm all for it, man. Uh, one half, yeah, 100%. Uh, well, that's, we can't really say that, can we? We can't really say that. But no, it's the, the paragliders. <laughs> I was like, come on, man. People fall for this. Paragliders with AK 47s over the Israeli border. People don't actually believe that, but they do. Oh, my goodness. I'm a Harry Brown. Yeah, but the problem, this is going back to what Jill says. So you might be want to be left alone, but they don't want to be left alone. But the issue is I've yet to hear an answer when I asked even Jill. I said, what do you want to do about it? This is the issue. Being aware doesn't do anything. I'm just, I mean, I'm still going to vote a straight line Republican ticket. I'm not changing that. You know what I'm saying? But just because 
you want to be left alone doesn't mean that they don't want to leave you alone, as we saw in COVID. But then to, to go back to the other way, it's all right. So now we're paying attention. Now what? Now what? And this is where I love Owen Benjamin. He says, what you do is you freaking live large in your own community, essentially. You basically, living large is the best revenge, 100%. Pretty lo- live large and is the best defense, is best revenge. And I just say that that works. You say find a community, 10 people, 10 miles w- within your distance that you know and trust. And uh, and just, you know, and just be a good person, honor God, honor your wife, and raise your kids right. And at the end of the day, that's pretty much all you can do. Because you're not going to take to the streets and start going nuts. I mean, you could. I'm not going to join you there. You know what I'm saying? You know, raise a garden. You know, show your kids how to freaking ride a bike. Um, not paying taxes in retirement is the best. I could not agree more, one hundred percent. And when uh, live large and eat ribeyes, yeah. If uh, if there's if there's something that can be done, I would say you start. It's, you know, your personal jihad, if, for instance. So, like, we're gonna go to Palm Sunday tomorrow. We're gonna you know, go to church, and I look. I don't. I think the Catholic Church is way has lost its bearings for many years with that stupid guy we got in there now. But you know, it, it's, God is still in me, and I still go to church uh, because there is a feeling of peace and remorsefulness in some regard. That you're like that the Catholic Church has been taken over by Marxists. You know what I'm saying? And you know, gay loving Marxists, illegal immigrant loving Marxists, anti uh, firearm Marxist, pro vax Marxist. Um, I said the J word. Ooh, the J word. I didn't say one J word. J. Jesus? Because there's another J word I did not say. Make sure I don't say the other J word because that'll keep it killed. Yeah, they're pretty safe, dude. I wouldn't worry too much about uh, fixing nudies. All right, I'm going to get out of here, my friends. God bless. Appreciate y'all being here. Live large and eat ribeye, dude. That's great. But we got to get that to rhyme. So it's going to be live large and I'm not sure what J word you're talking about, brother. Because we gotta be careful what J words we talk about. If you know what I'm saying, the Josh word. Extend it. Huh. You guys gotta tell me what J word I said. Because uh, oh, personal jihad, right? On. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Ooh, I thought you said a different J word. Like, wait, I don't think so. Uh, your personal GI is just, you know, fix on, on fixing yourself, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, people hear that, like, oh, my goodness, he's, uh, he's going to Palestine. Crazy. All right, I get out of here, my friends. God bless. Appreciate y'all being here, and we'll see you next week. Right-eyed and bushy-tailed. Thanks again.